Did you just hear that? No, I can hear. Oh, I just he literally just jumped down half this flight of stairs. So we got this cat and now he's going to meow aggressively uh, in the middle of our break. We stopped the recording just to take a break, everybody. And uh, we I have a cat. So trailer park boys reference. So my cat's name is J-Rock, J-R-O-C mm-hmm. from trailer park boys. So he's J-Rock. Uh-huh. He's, he's a freestyle philanthropist. And um, during our five minute break, that cat aggressively pooped. And was just, I, he kicking the litter box so hard. He just sprinted up the stairs, if you could hear it. He kicked the litter so hard, I swear, I think he was knocking the top off the litter box. And I'm so, I'm so upset that I <laughs> wasn't recording because it was like, and he was proud. He's like, ah, like, fish more gooder with Tim and Dave. Ow. So, we <laughs> had to take a little intermission, uh, you know. Cat things happened, but what I really want to hear about is you know so we caught so we talked and you had eighteen pounds of fish in two casts. This mm-hmm. is incredible. Then you had an eight that really looked like it was about a ten, maybe an eleven if you know it, uh, I would. It just was huge. So yeah, needed a meal or two. For we sure. kind of me and Tim went through and we were like, how do you learn who the fisherman is? Well, what's what's the top five lures they just always bring, no matter what the the temperature is, the five lures that they're just they always want because they know they're going to go back to them. If whether it's they need to catch something quick, they need to pick me up there or or they're like, hey, I just need to throw this on because I need to be com- I get comfortable with my rod right now. I haven't caught a fish yeah. in a while. The, so, the way we described it was, you know, they say to get to know someone, walk a mile in their shoes. We mm-hmm. just said, look in their tackle box. Yeah. You know, what are they throwing? That's how you're going to get to know somebody, really. And realize, do I want to be your friend or do I not like you? Right. Yeah. Right. So Tim, <laughs> he's a poet. <laughs> oh, yeah. So what? what's your top five? Um, you can do it. Could be, it could be recently. It could be of all time. It could – you could – if a certain color yeah. or, or if color doesn't matter, it's, it'd literally be anything. So – Okay. So yeah, and it doesn't so need I, to be in an order either. Okay. So since I mean I'll start with the Florida stuff just because it's most recent to me. Absolutely. But, I mean, the biggest one that's always on the deck of my boat in probably two different colors, two different weights is I throw a bladed jig a lot. I throw a Z-Man jackhammer. Okay. Um, you know I, why it it just flat out catches fish. Mm-hmm. You know I mean I I don't have a reason that I throw a jack. Rather than it's a confident thing, I know it gets bit. I got a good hook in it. You know, I know it's a durable bait, and you can throw it through anything. You know, you could be on Okeechobee fishing a foot of water, less than a foot of water, and you could be throwing a, a bladed jig around catching fish. You could be on the Harris Chain fishing a, mm-hmm. a ten square mile grass flat, throwing around a bladed jig, getting bit. You know, you can literally take this type of bait anywhere in the country and catch fish on. You know, you can throw it under docks. You can throw it next to laydowns. You can yeah. you can do anything. So that that's a huge thing for me. Um, one, because it catches fish. Two, there's a million different colors. So you can kind of match what you need to match in those certain scenarios. Mm-hmm. And three, man, it's just a flat out, you know, fish catcher, versatile bait with different weights. You can fish it at different depths of water. Um, that's one that never leaves a deck in my boat. I mean, and that okay. is from Lake Champlain up in Vermont down to Lake Ocean. Dang. Okay. That, that's probably bait number one for sure. Okay. Um, bait number two, man, me, me and my Northern buddies, we joke a little bit. We call it the Florida Special. And the Florida <laughs> Special is just this piece of plastic that you can find. It's a speed worm. It's got some type of boot tail on it. Mm-hmm. You grab a June bug color and just drag that thing around like as slow as you possibly can. That is the Florida special. Yeah. And that's a bit down here. I can't tell you why. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if it's like one of those old school things that these bass are just accustomed to that you just like have to throw. Mm-hmm. But um, that's the Florida special is always on that come up with for sure. You're right. Your Florida special is what my dad has always used. Like when we're fishing like mm-hmm. Shelbyville in Illinois, just the big worm. And no. we always catch more than he does, but he always catches the biggest at one point. Yeah. For a decade. 
Yeah, for, for a decade, that's been the it's case. Insane. It's insane. Yeah. It's just wild. Yeah. And, um, God, yeah. So, it's, all right. So, so chatter. Your te- your, your te- not your tech. Your Florida special. Florida special. Those are your top Z, two. Man. Th- those are the two. Yeah. Okay. Then, I mean, and it, again, this drives me absolutely nuts being down here as well. But these fish eat a stick bait. They eat a Senko. They eat a uh, straight King Ocho. Anything, you know, that that Senko style, that stick, do nothing style. Mm-hmm. Bait. For some reason, these Florida strain bass, you put it around them, they eat it. And so, like, <laughs> there you go. I got a question. I got a serious question because you're you're from Pennsylvania. Yep. Did they not work up north? No, they, they, they did. They did, but they did, like, so I, I use a stick bait down here, typically when I'm like flipping reed heads or flipping grass or something mm-hmm. like that. If I were up north, I would be flipping a creature bait, like uh, yep, you know, a beaver or a style bait or something like that. I used a, um, oh, I'm losing my mind, um, a brush hog. I used a zoom baby brush hog right. up north. That was a great bait that imitated little lizards and things like that during mm-hmm. spawn. Um, but that, that was my go-to up north. And, like, you can still catch fish on a stick bait or a Senko-style bait up north, but it, it wasn't so lopsided. You know what I mean? Like, no, And I'm asking because that exact reason where I've caught in fish on a Senko-style worm, but yeah. it's never been as con- consistent as something with a little tail on it or something with a couple appendages. Right. And and I've never – I've I have – I've had so many different colors of Cinco's to where at one point, I think I still have it. I have just a sandwich Ziploc bag where I just throw them all in all the different colors. Cause I was at some point I was like, I have so many of these, I'm just throwing them out and I'm keeping three right. of each color and I'm putting it in one bag. Cause I use them, but I really never caught anything or I would use them more for Ned rigs. Yeah. Rip it, rip it in half and throw it up and just make it smaller. I'd have better luck yeah. that than just using a six inch stick bait. And they're, I mean, you're absolutely right. They're, they're, they're fish catchers. They will catch fish all over. Yeah. And, you know, whether you're whacking rig them, wacky rig them, one of dogs, and Nico rig, becomes, it's become a huge thing for active target. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I've, I had one tied on wacky rig when I was fishing on the Harris chain, Nico rig, just to active target fish with it. But um, it's, I, gar- I can almost guarantee you that if you come across a guy that's like flipping reed heads, or flipping cover that's not necessarily, I'm going to call it crazy thick. Like they're not punching mats. You know, they're not, it's relatively open, like a, like a reed head, or a, you know, a hard line. Um, nine times out of 10, they're, they're flipping a single, flipping a, a, a stick bait because it just, for whatever reason, just flat out outperforms, you know, other soft plastics for, for that, you know, application. Mm-hmm. So, it's that's something that's hey. all on my deck, man. Yeah, you got to do what works. You know, that's, that's what it is. Yeah, it is. It's I've I've got burned by being stubborn too many times. So right, yeah. On there. There's a difference. Selling out and buying in are two different things. Yeah, 100%. you know, you got. And if it's going to work and it's a tournament and there's money on the line, you got to do what's going to work. So those are my three Florida baits. Okay, I I'd be remiss if I didn't talk about. You know, kind of the northern roots here a little bit because that's mm-hmm. you know, that's what I grew up doing. That's where I'm from. Um, I grew up like an hour south of Lake Erie, which is you know, smallmouth heaven. You know, oh yeah, guys that for guys that want to go do that. Um, so growing up there, we were big on tube baits. You know, there's a mm-hmm. there's a there's a guy that we got to know pretty well, and then I guess we probably bothered enough that he uh, he allowed us to design our own color. For him, it is the, the the company is called Mizmo, M I Z M O. They're they're I don't know if they're just a northern company, or what, but hmm. um, great. Guy. And he allowed us to put this color together, and you know, two baits huge up on Lake Erie, the Great Lake. It's it's a goby mm-hmm. imitator. It's it's a crayfish crawfish imitator. Um, yep. But we've you know we also flipped it. You know we would we would pitch brush piles with it. We do a bunch of different things, but just a great bait that, you know, talking about it now, I should probably use it down here in Florida. 
I know that a lot of guys <laughs> use it. Bed fishing. Yeah. Um, you know, that's a bait that I use growing up nonstop. Okay. Okay. Heck yeah. And then, and then the last one, number five, probably be, I'm a, I'm a jig guy. I'm in, in general, just a big old, big skirt. You know, I, I, the Buckeye lures are the, are the jigs that I use. Mm-hmm. Um, they have what's called a living rubber skirt. And it, it really does make a difference because what, what I've found is when you're using a jig, guys try to add much action to a jig. Like, you know, when you, when you pitch a soft plastic in there, you kind of yo-yo it a little bit, don't get bait, pull it out. That's a, that's a common mistake with a jig. Mm-hmm. Pitch a jig in, let it hit the bottom. Because what happens as soon as that bait hits the bottom or maybe it hits a treetop or maybe it hits a log or something like that. But as soon as the hard part of that jig head hits something, it plumes the skirt. And then allows whatever trailer you have on there to kind of be lifeless. But if you take that bait after it plumes and you move it, it immediately tightens that skirt back up and that, that natural action of the jig is gone. So we've that's, got that's I'm giving away some juice right now. Dude, but, <laughs> I never Well, I'm I, I'm thinking about that so much right now because you know if you look at mine and Dave's go to like it's it's a jig and with the skirt and everything mm-hmm. and yeah, keep going I fish I it, it. a lot of times you know i'll be if i'm gonna cause we, i'll generally put like a swim on like a swim soft plastic on the back yeah and i'll reel it in and i'll give it the jerk you know to pull it up and then let it fall thinking let it plume but i'm yeah. thinking like am i letting it fall enough or am i just keeping that skirt against it the whole time as i'm trying to make it you know, pop and just kind of fall. Right. So, the, so I'm, I'm thinking about that now. Yeah. So the way he has that jig in his hand right now, if you think about, if you think about that jig going through the water, that skirt is going to tighten up down towards the body of that plastic. And which isn't, it's not necessarily a bad thing. I mean, you're, you're getting the action to trailer, like swim jigs are incredibly effective lures, but as far as flipping a bait, when you're fishing more of a, a spot or a stationary target, versus swimming a jig over some type of cover, you know, you want to try to keep that bait in that fish and strikes him. So mm-hmm. you take that bait and he turns it and he puts the hard head down on the top of his head. You can see how much, you know, that skirt plumes up, but when it's in the water, it's going to be up towards his top hand. You know what yeah. I mean? It's just going to plume yeah. out. It's going to plume you know, out, yeah. Like, like it'll kind of, would bloom. as yeah. it falls, and just do it very slowly. It'll yeah. fall outward. And, and that is, you know, I learned that from a guy down here in Florida that's, that's done incredibly well with the jig on Okeechobee. Mm-hmm. You know, he was like, listen, man, everybody wants to fish fast. Everybody wants to throw their bait in a cover and shake it around, make it go crazy to think they're attracting the fish. But when you're fishing with the jig, especially, that jig is doing all the action you need to do, for the most part, within reason. You right. know, you're initially, initially fishing in it. You know, yeah, you can hop it. And when it sits back down to where you want it to go, let it sit, you know, just that extra couple seconds to let that jig do what it's, it's designed to do. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I think that's that's made a huge difference for me as far as how many bites I get with the jig. Right. I mean, that's that's something that's always on my deck. So jig, you know, emulates anything, imitates anything from, you know, all these brim and bait fish and, you know, the, the darker color brim yeah. down here. You go up north, you're, you know, it's a bluegill pattern. It's a crawfish pattern. It's, right. You can do whatever you want. So just another very versatile bait that changes, again, depending on weight, color, what trailer you put on the back. So that's that's one you got to keep locked mm-hmm. in. No, that's awesome. That kind of blew my mind for a second because I was like, oh, my God, that's why, you know, because we're really into we, we – it's either quick retrieve and kind of figure out what's underneath it and then cast it again and kind of fish that, that, uh, same area. Mm-hmm. And that, or it was, it was like, you know, the bounce, just pull it up, let it fall and bounce it. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, that waiting part, the, like, I think I've been doing that more in the last couple of years is if I'm going too fast, I have to like actually talk to myself aloud and go, Dave, count to five. Yeah. Okay. Just David count to five. Don't <laughs> touch it. Because I've always been one of those ADD fishermen where I'm like, I just, I like to retrieve. But it's like, David, yeah. 
five seconds. Now pull it and do something. And I'll give it five sec. You know, I need that reminder sometimes. I need to do that if I'm ever trying to throw like a wacky worm or something. Like I'm like, don't reel, don't reel, let fall, let yep. fall. It needs to fall. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it'll drive me nuts. There's a uh, guys down here, and I'm I'm much the same as as you two. You know, I'm, I'm ready to burn up some water, and you know, in my mind, I'm always like, you know, if I'm if I'm put next to the fish, it's gonna eat it. You know, what I mean, has to, it has mm-hmm. to. Right. Well, I've seen some of these old school guys fish so dang slow. And when, when I say they pitch something in there and they wait 30 seconds, that is no word of a lie. It is 30 seconds that they let that thing soak and they catch them. I mean, it's, it's mm-hmm. incredible that, and it's all based on, you know, there's a lot that goes into it, but water temper is a huge thing. Cold of the water. <laughs> yeah. The poor patient. You better be, man. Right. Gosh, gosh. So those are your top fives. I, will, I, I do want to ask, is there one lure or rig that you use just because you're stubborn but haven't had the most success with? Because we had to share that one during our <laughs> Demand Days talk. Like, there's that one that you always have with you. You always put it on the throat, but you just, you're like, I know this should catch a ton of fish, but for some reason I don't. Yep. And my. Cool. <laughs> Uh, it drives me nuts because like, I feel like we all have that bait. But mine is uh, it's a big 8-inch paddle tail swim bait. I mean, I'll tell you why. Because mm-hmm. I had and it, I think it's a great bait and there's a lot of different companies that make them. I think it's a great bait, but the conditions have to be so perfect for those fish to actually eat it instead of just following it. And, mm-hmm. you know, when I first really started using them, I had like, it was like the second time I ever used it. And I had the mat, the stars aligned. All right. It was like, it just, everything went right. It was perfect conditions. And it was me and my buddy who, who's recently moved up to South Carolina, but we were out on Lake Toho actually. And, uh, well, this big swim made out. We weren't catching a whole lot of stuff. The wind started blowing just right. There was that little diamond on the water that was just perfect. And we proceeded to catch like, 40 pounds of bass with our best five. And like, it was, it wasn't quite good. It was probably like, it was probably mid thirties. Yeah. In like an hour. God. <laughs> so, that's I, I mean, I bring it out and throw it all the time. Like any, anytime I think I'm around big fish, I'm always, I always give it a shot, but it's, uh, I mean, I've caught a few fish on here or there, but it's one of those ones. I'm like, man, I spend way too much time throwing this dang thing. Mm-hmm. That was, yeah, those, those bigger paddle, paddle baits, those, uh, I went down a rabbit hole when I moved to Ohio, right. uh, cause I, I met a guy on the lake and he was my age and he was like, Hey, I'm going to go to this over lake over here next weekend with a couple guys meet us at noon. And I was like, Oh, okay, cool. Whatever. He caught like a six pound large mouth on this paddle bait and a swim jig pat with a paddle tail. And I think I was like, okay, this is what I need for Ohio. I must've spent like $150 in different colors, different different makes different models like i got the v8 i got the four cylinder with the dual turbo i got the dually diesel one i was like i was like got all of them i was like one of them's gonna work i'm gonna figure it out i never caught a damn thing <laughs> and like you, you take that and you pair that with like this front facing sonar active target and everything when yeah you can you can see when those giant bass fall to the boat but then you can see him following it like 60 feet away and they won't eat it it will drive you insane like God. literally insane God. yeah speaking of that like that's yeah right take another breather we'll jump back on but what you just said is what i want to probably talk about next i want to hear about you know that sonar and the gear on the boats nowadays because i see it on my watch tv and i'm like how do you use that and yeah. what is being, what's right. it, what are you truly looking for? Yeah. And um, but yeah. It, it is like Jesus. learning a different language, but I love watching it when they peel off that, that scratch screen, oh, yeah. the protector. It's the most beautiful thing in the world, but we'll be back in five. <laughs> yeah. Cheers. Yeah. Cheers, back boys. In five. <sighs>